Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. A bit of different scenery. I have the club light up and I have a new top on. Keith here from Come On The Hoops. If this is your first time coming across the channel, be a legend, like and subscribe it would be appreciated. We're here to talk about this man yet again. There has been some development today in regards to the future of Matt O'Reilly. And Fabrizio Romero last night discussed on X that Atalanta, who are the Europa League winners who play in Serie A, have looking to weigh up a bid of 17 to 18 million euros for the Danish midfielder. He's 23 years of age, who has three years left in his current deal, and confirmed by Sky Sports earlier on the day, Celtic have knocked back a second offer from Atalanta, around 14.3 million plus add-ons. More likely, as Fabrizio Romero tweeted last night, it could be around the 18 million price range. Are they having a laugh? Are they actually having a laugh? At the end of the day, I'm not trying to make out Matt O'Reilly to be Zidane Zidane in any way. He's 23 years of age. He has a lot of potential. He's Champions League experience. He's been capped for Denmark. He's won trophies with Celtic. He plays in the big games and he has man and match performances. This is mediocre stuff from Atalanta. Mediocre stuff. At the end of the day, they have Champions League football this coming season. And I hope we do get them in the group, to be honest with you. Because a lot of Matt stays and he scores a goal against them or two against them. At the end of the day, the Scottish Premiership, very underrated by the outside world, especially the Italian press and the Italian teams. There is Roma interested, Juventus interested, Atletico Madrid being interested from La Liga and reports from Liverpool Echo and Team Talk that Liverpool are also on the radar as well to sign Mr. O'Reilly. There's the source there, team talk there. At the end of the day, 30 million price tag on him. My fear is his agent starts whispering to his ears saying, oh, you could go to this club, get three times the wages, or you can go to like a team like Liverpool. You know, At the end of the day, he's a more than love by the Celtic fans. The grass is always greener on the other side, but... We do need to make profit on Matt O'Reilly. We really do at the end of the day. Remarkable season last season with the 19 goals, the young player of the year, players player of the year, you know, player of the year from Celtic as well. But we should be stubborn on this, really stubborn. I'm sick of saying the same stuff all the time because we need to build a midfield around Matt. Yeah, he's taken the captain's armband for the last couple of games, scored two goals here tonight. It'd be interesting to see what he does against Man City and Chelsea. I don't think Celtic are going to go near entertain that. I'll say Atalanta will put one more bid in around 22 million and then that'll be the end of them. And we'll see if Liverpool are actually interested or Southampton or Roma or Juventus. Let them all queue outside. It. Let them all put interest in. At the end of the day, it just shows that Matt O'Reilly, since he signed from the MK Dons, has been class for Celtic. Absolutely class. But we'll move on from that. Regards to Benjamin Seacrest, he travelled over the weekend to Bucharest in Romania to seal a deal with Rapid Bucharest, who Neil Lennon is the manager of. He's two years left in his deal. He's only played two competitive games for Celtic over the last two years. I don't know how much the fee will be. It won't be a free deal anyway. It won't be a free deal. So even if Celtic make even half a million or some sort of profit on it, it will be interesting at the end of the day. Let's talk about this kit, the yellow kit. Pictures were released today from Celtic. And obviously, I've done a couple of videos on this particular kit over the last two or three weeks, leaked pictures from Footy Headlines. And it is the real deal. It's the real deal. Yeah, some people are saying Adam Eda would feel like he's at home wearing this yellow and green on away days for Celtic. But we need to get this jersey on as soon as possible, dying to see it on. Green shorts, yellow socks. I'm sure Celtic will probably go in all yellow shorts as well for maybe European games. It just depends on the opposition. But I'm loving the 40 Clover. The price of this top short sleeve with the sponsor or no sponsor is £70. I'm a fan of it. I'm absolutely a fan of it. The sad thing is you can't get it in long sleeve. So Alistair Johnston, Days in my aid, Callum McGregor, all done the modeling for this particular top. And I think it looks absolutely fresh. Looking forward to seeing what the third kit is. Never know. Could be a bumblebee. You never know. Time will, find, time will tell. 
But I, I'm rating this quick kit, you know, eight out of ten. It's I'm really in the, I'm really digging the Farley Clover and I'm really digging the green stripes going up the sides as well. The round neck is similar to the home kit, and then the dark green stripes going down the shoulder blades. And I'm loving this light green and dark green pin stripes going across there. Look at there's gonna be people that are watching this video that just don't like it, that think it's absolutely disgusting, and that's okay. That's okay. At the end of the day, it's your money. It's what you're going to spend on. A lot of people don't like this top, and I love this top. So it is what it is, folks. Once we have an update regards to Paolo Bernardo, hopefully making his making tracks to Glasgow to seal a deal with Celtic over the next couple of days, fingers crossed. The last report we heard was on Friday from Portuguese Ebola. They discussed that it was going to be a 3.8 million deal, 16 grand, and obviously a five-year contract for Paolo Bernardo. Four years with extension of a one-year if optional. We'll see what happens with Paolo Bernardo. I'm sick of talking about Adam Eda. I'm not going to comment on regards to what's going to happen to him in Norwich. Let's see. At the end of the day, we should be going out and focusing and getting a, a striker and addressing it. I know Brendan Rodgers told us on the last couple of days that he would like to have three strikers, but it is the situation we're in. We're Rockavata leaving. We have to go out in the market and obviously strengthen in that department. And we only have Quayog at the moment. So hopefully we will sign two strikers. If it's Mavrosky, for someone that doesn't like the way you pronounce it, if it's Shankland or if it's Tommy Conway or if it's another striker, we shall see over the next couple of weeks. Time is against us regards to having th three strikers or two strikers for the opening game of the season, which is on the 4th of August a half four kickoff against Kamarnik at Paradise. So let's see how this develops over the next couple of days. Once we have a more of an update, I'll be back on it straight away and having a chat to you. So enjoy the video, folks. Do comment below the valuation of Matt O'Reilly and do comment below as well what you think of the new away top. Hell, hell. Have a good one. Take care.